Hello and welcome to the Rich Women's Misery Podcast, episode beta 62 for Saturday, the 2nd of January 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever the hell we want. That's a- uh, that's Kent, I'm Amos. Uh, damn it, like, New Year, still can't get that shit right. <laughs> and that's why we're still in beta. Son of, a, up, dude? son of a bitch. This is, <laughs> it never works out right. This is bullshit. Uh, man, I'm I'm doing good. It's uh it's it's Sunday afternoon for me. It's Saturday evening for you, and uh, we're rocking and rolling uh, through the Ridgewood Misery podcast. What's up, man? Yeah, um, you know I I can't complain too much. Um, sitting here in my newly arranged studio, and I'm about to pour an amazing beer, which I will talk about soon. Um, How's your day going? In your week? In your what I guess? Well, it's, I guess it's only been like what a day and a half since we last heard from you. Uh, something like that. It's uh, probably not long enough because holy shit, <laughs> that was an event. Yeah. So what Amos is talking about is the New Year's Eve marathon slash charity event that Ritual Misery sponsored or conducted. I guess ninety um, percent in thanks to Amos. Um, I would say that it was a tremendous, ex- tremendous success. Let's uh, say you. If you measure success by the fact that I didn't fall asleep, we're good. <laughs> if well, you, that, that's if one you, good measuring. Statement. If you measure success on the fact that we did raise some money for a, a, a Diamond Club family, uh, we're good. Um, so uh, I say we just stick to those measures because we're good. <laughs> no, I would also say that it was a hell of a lot of fun. It, uh, it was talked was... to some awesome, awesome people. Yep. Um, it was it was great, man. It was it was a really good time. And if you guys missed it, I am sorry you missed out. You will probably eventually see a uh, trimmed down version of the twenty four hour live stream, probably sometime by June or so. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it doesn't take that long. <laughs> But yeah, so Amos, Amos is putting together basically a highlight reel, which is it's actually going to take quite some time to trim down all of the wonderful goodness into what? What do you think? Like an hour, two hours, uh, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. No, no more than two hours. I mean, nobody's going to sit around and watch it for two hours. You know what I mean? Like that's right. Yeah, uh, exactly. You, you could go to. But the there, movie. Were, there was some really good stuff for two hours. Uh, for, you could you could almost go back and uh, watch Star Wars: uh, The Force Awakens again. Yeah, for a third time. That would yeah. be cool. Yeah. So that's what you did last night. Yeah, I watched it for the second time last night. Um, it's such a good movie, dude. <laughs> it was it was a totally different experience seeing it the second time. Right. Uh, I mean, the first time was just, it was basically just shock and awe. Like, oh my God, I'm watching Star Wars. Oh, emotion. Oh, another emotion. Oh my God, this is so cool. What an emotion. Uh, the second time, I mean, there was still, there were still a couple parts that, that were a little emotional, but it was more, it was like, all right, I've seen this. I know what's coming. I know what's happening now. I can really pay attention. Yeah. And I think I might've enjoyed it better the second time. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it was, I noticed a lot of things that I didn't notice the first time. Yeah. Um, and plus, you know, I'd, I'd had, what I guess about a week and a half or so to well no probably two weeks now to, to digest, digest my first viewing mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, yeah I think I got more out of it this time actually yeah uh, that's uh, that's one of those things that that I watched it back to back on the opening night and I really enjoyed it the first time I paid more attention to it the second time and uh, I could easily go back and watch it again and still see more things and understand more and have certain points of focus it's going to be very interesting to, to see the breakdowns when the when the video is released and people can just sit there and binge watch it over and over and over and over and over again right in freeze uh, frame exactly uh yep so um yeah yeah very very good movie yeah i'm gonna go see it to, uh, again tomorrow i think <laughs> <laughs> uh you don't say yeah well i, I took the boys last night while Stephanie was at work and Steph was like, well, I want to see it again. I was like, Oh, that's cool. We can, we can go see it again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shucky Derns. 
Um, <laughs> so, uh, what is this you have in here about the Inquisitors? Okay, uh, you have not watched the Rebels cartoon. I have not. All right. Well, this takes place about five years before Episode Four, and it's kind of the beginnings of the Rebel Alliance. And there is kind of a, a fringe element of Jedi that it, that still exists, the ones that escaped Order 66. Mm -hmm. And the Emperor commissioned a group of, of dark side users, like kind of low-level dark side users, to help Darth Vader hunt down the last remaining Jedi. And that group is called the Inquisitors. And they, they dress in black, and they all have these, like, um, these like spinny lightsabers and they they all have like different like headgear and 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 things but they they're they're basically badasses that that hunt down jedi well after watching the force awakens for the second time lucas and i were talking about the knights of ren and like who they might be and where they might have come from and then it just kind of hit me that oh shit what if the inquisitors eventually become the Knights of Ren. And it was just like, wow, has anybody even thought of this before? And I typed in, in Google, Inquisitors, and then I typed the K, and then it auto-filled to Knights of Ren. So I'm not the first person <laughs> to come up with this theory, but uh, I don't know. It's interesting to think about. There, there's a lot of things in Rebels because it's not only is it is it canon, but the, it's currently being produced. So right. they're doing things in that show to, that they're, they're purposely... the current movies. Exactly. So I I think there's some some credence to it. If if they are not the Knights of Ren, then they probably have something to do with the Knights of Ren in, in some way, shape or fashion. Hmm. So I, I, I don't know. Just layers, layers. So would the next logical conclusion be that the First Order is the uh, the remnants of the Empire, not not just some random offshoot like it's kind of portrayed? Um, maybe it's hard to say because like the empire is a government, just like the Republic is a government. Right. And the resistance is a, a, um, like kind of an independent group that's supported by the Republic. And I think the first order is kind of, um, like a military, like a militant, um, offshoot. I guess of the empire. That's how. That's kind of how I see it. Okay. Like it's not directly the empire. I think the empire still exists as a government, and the first order is just this. Uh, the, the current. It's basically like the it's basically like the Al Qaeda to the Taliban. Uh, to, there you go. It's like the Al Qaeda to the Taliban. That's kind of how I see it. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. So, whether that's uh, accurate, I don't have any idea <laughs> so the the it was star wars is definitely the biggest movie of 2015 monetary wise um oh, yeah. possibly the biggest movie ever but that has yet to flesh out i mean i'm, I'm sure it's going to go there but it's not the numbers haven't been crunched yet to to prove so um it may be the first ever billion dollar movie uh which it it is actually that it passed the billion dollar mark uh, a couple of days ago, I think. For the U.S. market or for worldwide? Uh, I think it was worldwide. Yeah. See, I'm I'm talking about domestic. The first oh, okay. billion okay. dollar domestic movie. Yeah. I yeah I think it'll hit that. Yeah. Um. So that that should be uh something to look forward to in 2016. However, uh, we did we took a little time to look back at 2015 as far as the Ritual Misery podcast goes. Yeah, yeah, man. It, it it was a good year overall, I think. I mean, we we kind of started out slow because I we started the podcast in 2014. We were just kind of getting our feet wet, learning how to podcast. And you know, getting into 2015, we were still kind of in that that rolling start yep. period. And I think we we grew quite a bit over the last year. Um yeah, but it's a uh, it's it's one of those things where the numbers for the end of the year haven't quite fleshed out yet, of course. Um, but we do have we do have a good a good handful of the numbers that we that we did, and we did pretty good. I mean, we had a couple a uh, couple big guests on Margaret Weiss and Steve Perry. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had we had some uh, some some lower tier, I guess, uh, guess on. So, <laughs> lower tier, not yeah. not meant as an insult or or uh, a disparagement to the guests, because we had some really awesome awesome guests. Um, what Amos is meaning by that is that, uh, like celebrity status, yeah, uh, number of followers. Uh, Steve Perry and and Margaret Weiss have a uh, sizable uh, uh, fan base, a sizable fan base, mm-hmm. where most of our other guests, uh, you know, they've got some some followers, but you know, nowhere near the numbers that uh, that those two. Right. Right. Um, and, uh, overall, I mean, I think we really fleshed up our, our process. We got our, our processing time down. We got our, just the whole, the whole action, the, the whole, uh, scenario of making a podcast and releasing it has gotten a lot smoother. And I think we've gotten a lot more comfortable with it. And we've, we've kind of just mm-hmm. really found our way this year and, and, and made our way and made it such a, a much better podcast. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We've gotten a lot better. Um, so 2016, we've set some goals. We're, we're looking at, uh, where we're going to take the podcast and, and what we're going to do with it and some of the, the side projects that we're going to have, such as the Undaunted podcast that I'm working on, um, and, uh, doing more mini sods and, uh, getting more of the word out there about the podcast and, and getting more user or, uh, user listener feedback and, and, building that more into the show and, and incorporating that and making sure this is the best show that it can be. Absolutely. And part of that is bringing more and more guests in. Mm-hmm. We've already got a, a good lead. We've got, uh, I believe two people scheduled so far for mm-hmm. January with about four others kind of in line, uh, to get the, the rest of the January slots filled in. And, uh, yeah, we've, we've got a good lineup so far. Yep. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a very interesting interesting month for us and uh, very good start to the new year. Absolutely. So, uh, that being said, if you have some favorite moments of 2015 that you would like to uh, like me to compile into a best of, we would more than happy we'd be more than happy to to accommodate that. I will be making a best of for the 2015. And if you have some favorite moments or whatever else, feel free to let us know. Ritual Misery, uh, Ritual Misery Podcast at gmail.com and get that to us and we will we'll make that make sure that happens. And if yeah, you definitely man. If you send us a, a note saying what your favorite moment of twenty fifteen was, you might even see your name in the credits at the end. I can almost guarantee you that. <laughs> almost as in you want that to happen, but you're not the one making the video. <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly what I'm saying. So if it's not there, I will yell at Amos and yeah. call for a re-edit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um so looking looking beyond the uh, the the capturement of last year and looking into what's coming, uh, we did mention some improvements we're making. You you uh you you got some Christmas presents this year. Yeah, I did, man. Uh, so I want I want to give a shout out and a thank you to a couple of people. Um, Stephanie, my girlfriend, hooked me up with a new MacBook Pro that is helping me quite a bit with uh, kind of the setup for the show, kind of the behind the scenes type stuff. Uh, really awesome. I was dragging my feet on on computer shopping. I knew I needed one, but I was like, uh, I don't know, do I want this one or do I want that one? Yeah, she got me one. And said, here you go. So <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you so much for that. Uh, the, the mic boom that you can see here, uh, my friend, Matt, my friends, Matt and Shandy hooked me up with that. They saw it on my, my Amazon wish list, and got me that. And that is absolutely amazing. This frees up so much space on my desk. It is, uh, it's a big help. I appreciate that a lot. Thanks, Matt and Shandy. And then this doesn't exactly help with the production of the show. Uh, but I got a very special gift from a very special listener of our show, Kim. And I want to give her a very special thank you. She has been going back and listening to our archive, listening to all of the shows from the beginning. And she well, knows that I'm a hard person so, to shop for. So did you tell her I'm sorry? Uh, <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have actually apologized for a couple of episodes <laughs> up to this point. <laughs> Ouch. But no, it's all it's all in good fun. It's all in good fun. And well, anyway, so she knows that I'm a hard person to shop for. 
So not only was she listening to the show for her own enjoyment, but she was actually taking notes on some of the things that I said during the course of the shows to get ideas for a good Christmas present for me. So what she did, this is an episode from probably about a year ago, we talked about Trappist beers. Mm-hmm. And I, I guess I went on a, a huge peel about how much I love those beers and how they're just so amazing. Well, anyway, she went out and she found a couple of Rochefort Trappist beers for me. And it's so awesome. I am drinking one of them right now in my Rochefort Trappist glass. And, um, yeah, it's so good. Thank you, Kim. Thank you so much. I very much appreciate it. <laughs> but, but yeah, not only that, it's, it's I'm so jealous more right than now. the gift itself. Yeah. More than the gift itself. It's, it's just so cool to have a fan. Well, she's a friend, but also a fan of the show that is so interested in, in our work that they go back and basically mine the archives. And not only that, but take notes. <laughs> that she, is so cool. She would be a great person to take notes on uh, which episodes we should use for our best of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. I, and I will put that out to her for sure. Oh, I'm man. Sure she, she will be probably thrilled to do that. So if you'd like to send me some Trappist beers, by all means, I, I'll give you the address and, you know, just feel free <laughs> to let me know because, cause yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so man. cool. All right. So. I want to I cut back to Star Wars real quick here. And uh, this is the point where I saved this for last uh, specifically because we might get a little spoilery right now. So uh, if you haven't seen the movie for whatever reason, I, 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 don't, I don't know why you wouldn't have seen the movie by now. Uh, yes, yeah, first I, of all, go, go watch the movie. Yes, go watch the movie. Why are you even listening to this podcast? Go watch the movie. <laughs> um, but we're going to get a little spoilery, so suck it. Um, I saw a couple of Star Wars fan uh, theories that I, th- I thought were very interesting. And um, the first one that, that I linked to in here is, I don't know, it's, it's something, did you read it? Did you read the uh, from the link? Um, unfortunately, I did not. I, I've read some of the the theories that are out there, mm-hmm. but unfortunately I did not click the ones that you put up here. So I may or may not have read them. Okay. Um, basically it's, it's a, it's a theory about, um, Ray and her lineage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And essentially what it comes down to, and this is the best, the best one that I've seen. It, it takes into account, uh, JJ Abrams and the, 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 the story of Star Wars and and uh, the Force Awakens and everything else, and um, really captures it. And I think it's the best one I've seen about Rey's lineage. Uh, essentially, she's uh, a Kenobi. Is what it okay. is, is what it comes down to. Yep, um, I have heard this one. Okay, and yeah, it's it's, it's really well laid out, and I'll, I'll have the link in the show notes. But essentially, that's what it is. She's she's a Kenobi. She's not a Skywalker. Um, According to this theory, I'm not saying that it's definite. I'm just, this is the best one I've, I've seen so far. And it really convinced me that, yes, this is the plausible solution that uh, that, that I've been looking for. It's not something that's super far-fetched or anything else. It's actually, it makes a lot of sense. Um, okay. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, the a lot of people are like, well, when, when did Obi-Wan Kenobi have any sort of relationship well that was addressed in the clone wars cartoon he actually had a relationship with oh gosh who was she she was like the the leader of oh my god i think it was the man i think it was mandalore i think she was the the leader of mandalore Hmm. which uh, those familiar with star wars lore boba fett wears mandalorian armor so the the planet where where the Mandalorian warriors are from, I believe, is the. Um, I think that's uh, where she was the leader. But anyway, so Obi <laughs> as, so anyway, so Obi Wan had a relationship with this with this lady. So there's a possibility of some children coming from that. See, um, and and I bring that in because the next one that I linked up on here, 
uh, I think is complete and utter bullshit. I don't see how it fits in, ties into the story at all. I don't, I don't agree with it at all. And the, it's the theory that Kylo Ren is actually working for the light side, pretending to be dark side, uh, in order to subvert the first, the first order. Oh, okay, I'm gonna pretend so well that I kill my dad. Y- yeah, and, no, and, and, uh, and the theory actually states in there that he's asking permission to carry on his mission and prove that his his loyalty to the to the dark side to the first order by way of killing his dad. And his dad says yes. That's that's where it comes from. And I think it's complete nonsense. I don't think there's. I I just don't I don't buy it at all. Like at all. Of, no, of all the no, theories no. I've read, the, I'd, I'd I'd rather go with the Jar Jar one than than this one. I just think this one's so completely full of shit that it just it, it it doesn't even read for a good story. Like it's not even, you know what I mean? It it, it doesn't set the story up for anything other other than failure. Right. Uh, all it does is set up for a an oh my god moment, and then that's it. It mm-hmm. would fall flat. Yeah, like I, yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not. I'm not with that one at all. Mm-mm. So uh, I, I, I'll put those two in the in the links because if you're reading fan theories, that's really the spectrum it comes from. Is the well thought out? Hey, there's this, 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 and this. So I think this. And there's the hey, I'm just gonna go off a wild fucking tangent and come up with some miraculous shit that would never work in any universe, let alone Star Wars. And hope that it fucking <laughs> flies because I watched one too many episodes of Bold and Beautiful. Oh Jesus! Like it, it, the Bold and the Beautiful. Yeah, I couldn't think of any other uh, soap operas off the top of my head. <laughs> so I don't, I don't even know if that's um, still on TV. Is that still a thing? Like young are, are soap Bold operas? And yeah, are soap operas even a thing? Like, do people watch TV I, anymore? I don't even know. I don't know. I don't oh watch TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> TV. Shit, is that a thing? Uh, no, there's too much fun stuff on the internet to actually pay attention to to waste my time watching TV. <laughs> and and <laughs> football yeah. season's almost over, so my TV's about to get turned off permanently. Yeah. <sighs> well, man, that's, uh, that's that's all I had for this week. I mean, it's, it's kind of a light week. We, it's, well, it, there's a lot going on this last week, so. Yeah, I, only, I just wanted to add one more um, – theory i guess to the to the mix i don't know if we talked about this last time we talked about star wars or not but uh there's a, there's a theory going out there that i kind of partially subscribe to is that supreme leader snoke is going to be revealed to be darth plagueis uh see this is actually one that i was wanting to ask you about because i i don't remember Darth plagueis <clears throat> okay well all right so um what for for you and for everyone else who doesn't know who darth you mean plagueis is for, for all the people that don't know who darth plagueis is yeah what for, <laughs> for, for those people that don't know who darth plagueis is you should just uh ex- expand upon it because uh you know there's there's people out there that want to know right which is what i was in the midst of doing as you were interrupting me So anyway, in episode three, the scene where Anakin joins the, I almost said the Emperor, he wasn't the Emperor yet, the Chancellor, Palpatine, at the uh, the, the play or the, the opera or whatever the hell it was supposed to be, and Palpatine sends all the guards away and he tells Anakin, he's like, have you ever heard the tragedy of Darth Plagueis? And he's like, what? No. And so anyway, he explains that this is a a Sith Lord that learned how to manipulate life and control life and stop people from dying. And this was the seed that was planted in Anakin's mind that he could stop Padme from dying if he if he learned the ways of the Sith. Well, it's heavily, heavily, heavily implied in the movie that Darth Plagueis was Palpatine's master, that he learned the 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 ways of the Sith from Plagueis and killed him in his sleep. Well, there was subsequently a novel that came out called Darth Plagueis that confirmed that. However, that's expanded universes uh, and is now legends and is not canon. (laughs) But, but Darth Plagueis still exists at least as a, as a Sith Lord in, in canon because it was in episode three. Mm Mm-hmm. 
the uh, and then now this the the rest of this is borrowed from expanded universe because the it, like if you go to just Google search Darth Plagueis, mm -hmm. and if you find the cover of the novel, you will see what Darth Plagueis looks like, and it looks quite a bit like Snoke. Hmm. Now, uh, another thing that leads credence to this is that the music that's playing in the background when Palpatine is telling Anakin the tragedy of Darth Plagueis, that music is very, very, very reminiscent of the music that's playing while Snoke is on screen in The Force Awakens. So now we need a supercut. Yeah. Again, I can't wait for the DVD to come out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's, um, I don't know, it's an interesting theory. I, I've even heard people say that Darth, that Darth Bane is who Darth, uh, who uh, Snoke is going to turn out to be. Mm -hmm. uh, Darth Bane is the, according to lore, which I, I don't even know if this is canon anymore, uh, but Darth Bane is the first Sith that implemented the two, the, the rule of two, a master and an apprentice. Because there used to be, like, just like there's an army of Jedi, there was an army of Sith. Mm. But Darth Bane realized that, that that system isn't working because Sith just Fight kill each, each other, other. and um, he implemented the rule of two. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. That sounds ridiculous. Um, but wouldn't that violate the rule of two if Plagueis was still around and Palpatine was... Was the Emperor yeah, but, and Darth well, Vader was there? Sure. Like, sure, but um, I, I think the rule of two is kind of bullshit anyway, um, because I think the 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 rule of two basically, the way it's implemented anyway, is there's a master and an apprentice. So you've got two guys that are running around calling themselves Sith lords. Mm -hmm. So, but I think there are are multiple multiple Sith practitioners or Sith. Uh, yeah, I guess the practitioners of the of the ways of the Sith. I, I I don't know how else to say it. Um, that aren't actually lords of the Sith. So, for example, um, when Darth Maul was the Sith apprentice, the Sith Lord apprentice, Count Dooku was still in the background. He didn't just like all of a sudden appear on the scene as soon as Darth Maul was dead to become the new Sith Lord, he was right. already a Sith practitioner. So where would, he was there. Where would Plagueis uh, end up in, in that whole scheme? Well, he was believed to be dead. Okay, so... So, so if, if Palpatine or Sidious kills Plagueis and then he takes on his own apprentice, Plagueis still exists, but he's no longer a Sith Lord in the rule of two. Gotcha, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? That, that, at least that's how it plays out in my mind. Uh, but it was like I was saying with earlier with the Inquisitors. There's all these Sith practitioners or dark side practitioners that are used by the Sith Lords, but they're not truly Sith. So, yeah. <laughs> so take it or leave it. I don't know. I don't know. It's it, it's so it's so interesting and and refreshing to to kick around all these theories. Some of them being plausible, some of them just being absolutely ridiculous. But they're so fun to talk about. Mm. And that's one of the things that was kind of missing, I think, from from the prequels. Because everything we was kind of so knew laid the out story for you. Going, I'm sorry? Everything was kind of laid out for you already. Right. We kind of knew where it was going. We knew what was going to happen. We knew right. that Palpatine was going to be the, the Sith Lord. We knew that Anakin and Padme were going to have children. We knew it was going to be Luke and Leia. Like, there wasn't really any surprises. Right. It was just but a matter of how. This, Right, exactly. I mean, and, you can't and surprise now, us with what you have to surprise us with how, and it didn't. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but th but this is just so refreshing. It, we have if no nothing idea else. What episode eight is. If nothing else, it underwhelmed us with the how. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've actually I've got a mini so coming up soon about the prequels, so I don't want to give away too much of my thoughts and feelings on the prequels at this time. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, what else you got, man? Besides, That's it, man. besides a delicious That's Trappist it. beer. Oh, it's so good! It's so good. Oh, fucking jerk. <laughs> Be jealous. Ah, asshole. So, what? 
What? I didn't. I didn't say anything. You you must have just yeah. just heard subliminal messages in your head from your uh, rod, from your own guilt. <laughs> that, that's, oh that's, man! All right, I'm I'm gonna try to find some some Trappist beer and find a, a legal way to send it to you. Uh, it'll eventually come back around because they have it here from time to time. Um, it's just a matter of it's uber expensive, and they they don't get like one beer. They get like eighty dollar packs of six beers. It's like well, that's, oh Jesus. You know what I mean? Like I, 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 I'd spend ten bucks on one beer, you know, because it's good. I don't know if I'm spending eighty bucks on a six pack though. Like, you know, that's that's pretty steep. Yeah, that's that's a, that's 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 a couple weekends. I mean, it cost me twenty four bucks for my Newcastle Brown, and and shit, that'll last me a month. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Um, exactly. All right. Well, uh, so we have one more thing to cover. We have uh, actually. Uh, a, a listener out there bought one of our T-shirts. We have sold our oh. first T-shirt. Yes, we yes, have. Thank you so much. So that's really awesome. Um, they went to uh, ritualmisery.com forward slash swag. Uh, you can also get there from the from the homepage, and they went and bought themselves a T-shirt. So now they're out there supporting the Ritual Misery logo and the Diamond Club TV logo on the front, and that's pretty bitching. So we Hell really yes. appreciate that. If you would like to join that elite group, um, oh, and, and uh, just so we, just so we're clear, uh, the still in beta shirts are limited edition. That T-shirt is going away. Yeah, eventually we won't be in beta anymore. Right. So it's limited edition. Eventually that shirt that shirt will be the first one to go away when shirts have to start dropping off. Just just putting that out there. So if you don't get a still in beta shirt, it's your own fault. Like that's. You know, exactly. Get get on that train now because you don't know when we're going to decide. Well, oh, we're 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 done improving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully that day never comes around. But well, hopefully we could be a full fledged podcast one day. Yeah, instead of being in beta. Yeah, that. Yeah. It will be fancy. Um, I'm guessing that's going to come somewhere around uh, September this year. September, maybe October this year. Yep, and there's going to be so. A- a significant increase in the amount of swag available on our on our swag page. Um, I was playing with it earlier today, and it's a confounding user interface. So as soon as I so as soon as that, I get that figured out, so, there's going to be a plethora of more. So as soon as you as soon as you played with it, you realized why we have two different T-shirts and five copies of one T-shirt on there. Like, <laughs> oh, Basically. got it. Okay, because this is a this is holy shit. Yeah. But anyway, you can get all that and, and more at ritualmisery.com slash swag. So jump on that. Make that happen. Treat yourself yep. well. Uh, everything that's sold on that page does kick $1 back to us. So it's not... Uh, it's, one it's not, whole dollar. Yeah, it's not overly gouged or anything else. It's exactly $1. And uh, by the time that hits our pockets, it's actually like $0.72. Cents. So, you know, deal with it what you can. Um, you can find me at rm underscore del noche on Twitter. Oh. Or if you're a beer guy like me and you want to know what I really think about this beer, go to ratebeer.com slash Del Noche. Well, I don't know if you can get there that way. No. Go to ratebeer.com and just look up username Del Noche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the better way because that way actually that's the best way. That that way actually works. <laughs> yeah, that that way works for sure. <laughs> yeah. Where are you at, man? Um, I'm at Ethan Kane on the Twitter. Ethan Kane, no RM or anything else. I I didn't wait, you know, six years to get on the Twitter. <laughs> I jumped on there not long after it started up, you know, so uh, at Ethan Kane on the Twitter. Uh, you can follow the show at Ritual Misery on Twitter and uh, submit ideas on a subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com or uh, ritualmiserypodcast at gmail.com if you'd like to go a little bit more direct, one less step. And uh, you can call and leave us voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. That is 567 567- Six nine eight seven six seven two, and man, it's been a while since I said that. It's been like two weeks since we did a show. Of course, you can find yeah. all these uh, links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thank you for listening, for Kent, for me, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> <laughs>